Hey guys, Jeff here from Films at Home. Thanks for coming back to the channel. Uh, sorry for the delay and kind of lapse in videos. I've had some stuff going on with work trips and vacations and I'm actually heading on another work trip uh, right after this weekend to Toronto. So any of my Canadians out there, uh, let me know if there's any good spots I should check out for movies because uh, Canadian dollar is very good right now for shopping in the US. Um, great exchange rates, so I'm excited to possibly pick some stuff up in uh, Toronto in my free time. Um, but other than that, I've been, I've been sort of thinking about what I could do for more informative videos uh, based on the fact that I got a great response to uh, one of my latest videos about why older movies look better in 4K. That video now almost has 50,000 views, which is incredible. Um, hundreds of comments, hundreds of likes, and so it's clearly... Um, that type of content is something that everyone's interested in. And so I was thinking about, you know, how could I tackle that same sort of topic, um, you know, the, the behind the scenes stuff of physical media and sort of help explain uh, some of the goings on of 4K. And so one of the biggest questions I get a lot is about the HDR formats. And um, what a lot of people don't really know is that right now there is essentially an HDR format war. There's no format war on discs anymore, which is kind of interesting. There's no Blu-ray versus HD DVD or VHS versus Betamax or anything like that. Like the format war is over. It's 4K Ultra HD, that's the disc. But the interesting format war comes in with HDR. Um, and so I wanna talk a little bit about that, how you can understand the difference between HDR, HDR 10 plus and Dolby Vision. Uh, and sort of where all the studios and different hardware manufacturers are at. That'll give you a better understanding when you're going to look at buying TVs, buying 4K players, and also buying your 4K movies because there's a lot of things that um, you should know about HDR and the format before you just go out and make a purchase like that. So, without further ado, let's just jump into what HDR is. HDR is basically the, the biggest upgrade, in my opinion, 4K is this advanced color scheme. Now, I'm not a, a complete you know, HDR video, audio visual nerd. I don't really understand how all that works. All I know is it gives you a deeper, better color. There's more data, uh, which is all goes back to the 4K disc, having more uh, disc space. You can put more data on there. HDR format is more true to what the director wanted you to see. So HDR is your base format, right? Every 4K disc, for the most part, there are some without it, um, but most 4K discs, 95% have at least HDR. And then you get into the premium HDR formats, and this is where the format war comes in. You have HDR 10 plus, and then you have Dolby Vision, which is Dolby's own standard for HDR. So now just to give you a comparison point, HDR, uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about brightness and how the signal is sent. HDR has a thousand nits of brightness. That's sort of the, the brightness scale. I don't know why they're called nits, um, but it's a thousand nits. HDR 10 has 4,000 nits and Dolby Vision has 10,000 nits. Um, HDR 10 and Dolby Vision also send metadata through to your TV so that it can process frame by frame a different color scheme depending on what's happening. Whereas HDR is just allowing your TV to do that itself. It's not sending any data over to the TV, but if your TV is HDR capable, then the TV will decode the signal and upgrade it to HDR. An HDR 10 plus or Dolby Vision disc tells the TV exactly how it wants that picture to look. So it's just a more advanced form. Basically that's the, the main difference between uh, HDR and HDR10 and Dolby Vision, uh, HDR10 Plus and Dolby Vision, those premium formats. It's just the way the signal is sent and the brightness level of the colors. Now, obviously, Dolby Vision has that 10,000 nits of brightness. HDR10 Plus only has 4,000. The issue is that Dolby Vision's 10,000 nits, not many TVs, if any, you know, maybe some very high end stuff can handle that but that's gonna be more important when it gets to the large scale format movie theaters, right? So they have the Dolby theater experience now at a lot of AMCs where they've kind of replaced um, the IMAX enhanced theaters. Dolby's kind of now taken that over and there's that Dolby experience. That's where you're gonna get the full benefit of that advanced color scheme. And so Dolby really created that, in my opinion, more for the, for the movie theater experience, not for the home theater experience. Um, 
that being said, they're probably very close in brightness when it gets down to your TV because your TV is just not going to be able to handle the higher levels of Dolby Vision's brightness that, uh, you know, a much more expensive setup in a movie theater, which costs tens of thousands of dollars, can do. So there's your basic difference between the formats. And now, um, you know, I think we need to talk about sort of where each format is at and what the major studios are doing with 4K movies about those formats. And so as I said, most 4K movies will come with HDR. If it comes from a major studio, they're probably going to include HDR. It's a major benefit. But the question is who's including HDR 10 plus and who's including Dolby Vision? So sort of interesting, and this is why this came up, is there are a couple new releases, Godzilla, King of the Monsters, and Alita, Battle Angel. Alita's from Fox, uh, Godzilla, King of the Monsters from Warner Brothers. Both of those discs, for the first time for each company, will feature both HDR10 Plus and Dolby Vision. So, whatever setup you have, you'll be able to take advantage of the premium format. However, those are in the minority. Most of the time, it's either or. You're going to get HDR10 Plus, or you're going to get Dolby Vision, or you're gonna get neither and you're just gonna have regular HDR. What's interesting about these releases is that Fox especially had always been on the side of HDR 10 plus and now they're including Dolby Vision for the first time with Alita Battle Angel. That's sort of interesting that they're merging. Warner Brothers is doing the same merging, um, but a lot of the other studios haven't really decided. They either haven't decided which format they're going with or they've picked one and they're stuck with it. Uh, Sony is one for example. Sony has been on the Dolby Vision train from the beginning and they have no plans to go to HDR 10 plus and in so you know your Sony movies great they're gonna have Dolby Vision but if you don't have a Dolby Vision TV and you get HDR 10 plus you get no added benefit. So it'll be nice to see more of these movie studios kind of come together and just offer both formats because the problem is the hardware doesn't seem to be coming together on one singular format at all. And so we're going to need to rely on the discs for that. Another interesting note on the discs themselves is what Disney is doing. So Disney, as you know, we're talking about Star Wars, Marvel movies, great animated movies, which would look incredible with premium HDR format stuff from Disney Pixar stuff that you know, has been coming out recently as they've been doing 4K uh, re-releases of old catalog titles. But Disney doesn't do either. The biggest media company in the world for their physical media doesn't bother to include either HD HDR 10 plus or Dolby Vision. You're just getting regular HDR, um, which is why I've been majorly disappointed with everything Disney's done in 4K. They seem to really just be mailing it in uh, and if you're just giving us regular HDR, that's fine. But, you know, Disney, I always view Disney as a premium, right? You're paying extra for these movies most times. They really don't drop in price. They're always around that $20, $25 price point, no matter how old they are. And their 4K releases should be premium stuff. And they're not including any sort of premium HDR format. Really disappointing, especially when you consider stuff like uh, Avengers Infinity War or um, you know, Star Wars, The Last Jedi. N neither of those had any premium HDR. In the new release of uh, Avengers, the uh, Endgame isn't going to have either. And they're not even including IMAX scenes. So Disney's been really disappointing on the HDR front. They really need to get their act together. But it's something to note, if you do have a premium format TV or 4K player, um, you're getting no benefit with Disney titles, which is why for a lot of my reviews, I've been saying, I don't really see the upgrade here over the Blu-ray. They almost look identical. It's really disappointing. Now, on the hardware, let's talk about hardware because you've got your discs, right? But then you've got to figure out what kind of TV you're gonna buy. And so, sure, I did take some notes here because there's a lot of different formats going on and I wanna make sure I'm giving you the right information, but we've got say the three major players for TVs. You've got Samsung with their QLED technology, you've got LG with their OLED, and you've got Sony, right? So Samsung, only HDR10+. Samsung has not made a Dolby Vision capable display yet, and there are no plans in the current pipeline to do so. So if you have a Samsung TV, you're HDR10+. Now if you get an LG OLED, they're Dolby Vision. Team Dolby Vision all the way, their 4K players are Dolby Vision. Same with Samsung, their 4K players are gonna be HDR10+. 
So if you buy a Samsung 4K player, but an LG TV, you're not getting the benefit of either because they can't handle the other format. All you're gonna watch is regular HDR content. No matter what your player's capable of, it has to be compatible with your TV. Now, if you buy a Samsung player and a Samsung TV, you can do HDR 10 plus. And if you buy an LG player and an LG TV, you can do Dolby Vision, but you can't mix and match those. Sony has also been on the Dolby Vision train, as I said, with their discs. Same goes for their TV and their 4K players. They're only Dolby Vision, not HDR 10 plus. The only manufacturer currently that's talking about doing both formats uh, in their TV is TCL, which you probably know is sort of a budget brand. Uh, TCL sells a lot on Amazon and they're sort of a cheaper, um, I, I wouldn't call them necessarily bad. I think they have some decent quality screens, but they're gonna be cheaper quality um, than say a premium Samsung or LG TV. But they are currently experimenting with including both formats on their TVs. Other than that, all other TV providers that have 4K TVs are going to be either Dolby Vision or HDR10+. There aren't any that are currently doing both. So pretty disappointing. Which means, currently, there's really no way for you to get all of those formats lined up every time. Occasionally you might get lucky. Say you have a Sony TV, a Sony 4K player, and you get a movie like, I think Passengers is from Sony. You're gonna have Dolby Vision across the board, right? But that's a very rare case because if you have a Sony TV and a Sony player and you got a movie from Fox, Fox does HDR 10 plus, Fox doesn't do Dolby Vision. And so no matter what your TV and player can do, you're getting standard HDR because the disc isn't sending any extra metadata through Dolby Vision, it, it's not available. Same with if you had a great OLED TV from LG, which handles Dolby Vision, but you bought a Samsung 4K player because they're a little more, they were a little more readily available, now they're not making them, but you bought a Samsung 4K player, you're stuck, right? You're getting regular HDR because your Samsung 4K player is HDR 10 plus, your TV is Dolby Vision. It doesn't even matter what your disc is because your TV and your player are not communicating. And so it's really kind of frustrating, especially for those of us who have been these early adopters of 4K technology. Um, you know, it's been how many years now since the first 4K disc started to come out? It's been at least three years, if not four. End of 2015, 2016, I believe, we started to get a real solid 4K release schedule going. And we're talking three or four years later and we still haven't figured out how we want the color to display and which HDR premium format we want to use. So I'm really hoping that the studios and the hardware manufacturers, everybody can kind of just get their act together. Uh, my preference personally would be everybody just supports both. I think what's more realistic is that everybody supports HDR 10 plus. It just seems like a more accessible format. Although more of the hardware is currently supporting Dolby Vision, so it's really hard to say which way it's going to go right now. All you need to know is that you need to be very careful when buying your equipment. If you're looking at buying a 4K TV and a 4K player, I would highly recommend buying from the same brand so that you're getting the same HDR format across your TV and your player. Now what happens on the disc, that's another story. You can't control that, right? But if you buy an LG player and an LG TV, at least you know if you have a Dolby Vision disc, you're going to get Dolby Vision all the way through. If you have an HDR10 plus disc, unfortunately you're stuck. Um, but then alternatively, you could go with a Samsung player and TV and have that, but have no Dolby Vision. As you can see, it's a total mess out there right now. And it's interesting that the format war for 4K didn't turn into, you know, it's 4K Ultra HD versus 4k super hd discs and we have this format war of who's going to win uh who controls the physical media the whole format war has come down to how are people encoding their movies uh strictly from an hdr standpoint it's kind of crazy especially when you consider that you know receivers audio receivers if you want to talk about audio you've got dolby atmos and dts x right those are your major formats almost every receiver out there handles both there's no disagreement between what you're going to handle. So if you have a DTS X track or a Dolby Atmos track on the disc, sometimes you might get um, you know, just 
uh, a receiver that only has one or the other. But for the most part, any modern receiver can handle both. So no matter what setup you have, no matter what receiver, no matter what speakers, and no matter what disc, it'll be able to play the premium audio format. Unfortunately, we can't say the same for video, so it's really disappointing. Now, that was a lot of information. Again, I'm going to try to, I tried to include graphics uh, throughout to sort of explain where I'm coming from um, and kind of break up just me talking at you. But I think it's a really important topic to understand, especially if you're getting into 4K collecting or you've already started collecting and maybe you're looking to upgrade your player or your TV. There's a lot of variables to consider when it comes to HDR in this new format war. So I wanted to get this information out there. Hopefully it was helpful. Hopefully it wasn't overwhelming. It is a lot of information that I just threw at you at one time, but I do think it is super helpful when making a buying decision on discs and hardware. Um, so I hope you guys liked that one. Again, I'll be back with more 4K reviews coming soon. I do know that Alita uh, Battle Angel is in the mail to me right now, so I'll have a great 4K review of that coming very soon. And I'm excited about some of the other 4K titles that are coming down the pike here. Um, so make sure you subscribe, stay up to date, turn on those notifications, you'll know right when new videos go live, especially since my video schedule can be a little sporadic with work and travel and other things. Um, I, I can't commit to saying doing a video every Tuesday or Wednesday or doing a video Tuesday, Thursdays, whatever it is, twice a week, three times a week. It might be once a week. Turn on the notifications. That way you'll know right when a new video goes live. And there are also some ways you can find out about what's going on. Um, follow me on Instagram for sure. That's a great place to find me. The link's down in the description. And also, if you do like these videos and you want to support my channel. There are a few ways you can do that. There is a direct PayPal donation link that goes right to my PayPal account. Um, that's a direct donation to me. There are other ways you can donate as well, like going through Amazon links. I've set up an Amazon storefront where you can buy 4K and Blu-ray movies. Any purchase through my storefront, link down in the description, that will support my channel. And I've also put Amazon affiliate links to things like my shelving, my speakers, my projector, my home theater seating, my projector screen, my receiver, subwoofer, all kinds of stuff. If you do happen to go through any of those links and make a purchase, it does help support my channel. It gives me a little kickback, so I appreciate that. I appreciate everybody who has donated so far, um, and I really appreciate all the support on these recent videos. So definitely let me know what you thought of this one in the comments. Leave me a like if this was helpful for you, uh, and I will be back soon with some more 4K reviews home theater reviews, uh, and just general updates on this crazy physical media community. So I'll talk to you guys soon. Have a great day. See you soon.